Good early morning, everyone. I'm in downtown Sacramento today, and I'm checking out the very infamous house where Dorothy Puente lived and where she killed all of her victims. I am standing on the corner of F Street and 15th, and F Street is where she used to live. Now Dorothy Puente uh, was in her 50s and she ended up going on a, on a murder spree. I guess you would classify it as a serial killer. She killed people from 1982 to 1988 and all of her victims were all elderly people who she basically took care of or allowed to stay in her house. Her house was basically like a boarding house and so she allowed people to stay there for, you know, for cheap rent and she would supposedly take care of them and their finances. But that is when things started to go awry. She ended up killing nine people that were confirmed by police, um, potentially 15 or more victims, but nine confirmed. She would basically steal their money or checks or jewelry, whatever she could get her hands on. And of course, she would befriend them first to get them to trust her. And then she would, you know, take all their stuff sign some wills over to her, etc., etc., and then she would kill them. And so the house where all that happened is actually right in front of me. Um, this is, uh, again, right on F Street. Fourteen twenty six F Street. Now, if you come here later in the day, I believe they let you uh, kind of wander around the grounds of the house. Of course, it's seven in the morning, so it's, everything's locked up, but I kind of wanted to come before a big crowd of people came because it's really hard to film when there's so many people. The nine confirmed victims were her boyfriend. Again, I use that term boyfriend lightly because I think she just got together with him in order to steal his stuff and kill him which is exactly what she did. Uh, but anyway, so her boyfriend was 77-year-old Everson Gilmouth. Uh, he was uh, reportedly one of the first victims. Uh, the remaining eight confirmed victims were 61-year-old uh, Ruth Monroe, 78-year-old Leona Carpenter, 51-year-old Alvaro Montoya, 64-year-old Dorothy Miller, 55-year-old Ben Fink, 62-year-old James Gallup, 64-year-old Vera Martin, and 78-year-old Betty Palmer. For each person that she killed, it sounds like she buried a good chunk of them or all of them uh, either outside by the garage. Uh, she forced some people to pour some new concrete and also, uh, she dug up, I think, part of her basement to, to bury some of the victims. So Dorothy Puente was born January 9th, 1929. Her maiden name, I guess, was Gray. And uh, it says that her father died in 1937 after a bout of tuberculosis. And her mother died one year later in 1938 from a motorcycle accident. After her parents died, she was sent to an orphanage. She was sexually abused. Her childhood slash upbringing, uh, I guess, was anything but normal or lovely. And who knows, maybe that played a part in, you know, everything that happened. However, there are tons of people around the country that have way worse upbringings than that and don't go on to kill people. So, you know, there's that too. She was married at least four times that I could find online. Her first time being married at age 16, and it says her last husband was Roberto Puente, um, hence why she changed her name from Gray to Puente. However, it sounds like she tried to serve him uh, divorce papers, but he fled to Mexico. And so they kind of had a interesting off and on relationship and Dorothy had been arrested uh, numerous times for varying crimes. 
before she finally settled down and opened up the very now infamous boarding house here on F Street. So in April of 1982, one of Dorothy's tenants, 61 year old Ruth Monroe, was found dead inside the house. Police arrived and they figured out that Ruth had actually died uh, overdosed from codeine. Dorothy told the police that Ruth was kind of depressed, so they surmised that Ruth had committed suicide. However, we'll find out later that that is not the case. Several weeks later, one of the other tenants that was living in the house, he claimed that Dorothy had been drugging him and stealing from him. Police again were called back to the house and they did end up arresting her and charged her with several counts of theft. She served prison term of three years, but during her time in prison, she ended up kind of corresponding with an older gentleman by the name of Everson Gilmouth, who became more than just a correspondent. Uh, when she got out of prison in 1985, Gilmouth became her boyfriend. In November of 1985, uh, Dorothy had hired a guy by the name of Ismael Flores and basically asked him to build like a six by three foot by two foot box. And she told him she needed it because she needed to store some random items inside. And so he willingly agreed and built her this box. A while later, she asked him to help her transport this box kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And so he agreed. And so they dropped off the box, uh, which kind of resembled a coffin as from what I've read. January 1986, some locals discovered the odd coffin looking box and contacted police and they opened up the box and they found the decomposed remains of an elderly gentleman. The remains belonged to none other than Dorothy's former boyfriend, Everson Gilmouth. And again, at the time, she had still been collecting his pension and retirement checks. She told his family that he was just ill and that that was the reason why he couldn't contact them. So on November 11th, 1988, police were called back to Dorothy's house as a social worker had called and told them that one of Dorothy's tenants uh, had disappeared once again. Uh, this tenant was 51 year old Alvaro or Alberto Montoya. And I guess Montoya had different uh, developmental or mental issues as well as schizophrenia. And so when police arrived, they noted that there had been uh, recent uh, soil or dirt that had been moved around that they saw next to the house. Uh, so they, they eventually ended up digging up the yard and that's when they discovered seven of the nine uh, victims, uh, their remains were, were buried next to the house. Now what's interesting is it says that at, at the initial time when they found these uh, bodies, uh, Dorothy was not initially a suspect. They didn't arrest her right away. They let her do her thing. So she ended up like fleeing and ended up at the airport where she ended up meeting another elderly gentleman who she tried to befriend. However, he, he saw her and noted that she resembled someone that he had seen on TV. So police came and finally arrested her. The trial started in 1992 and ultimately she was only convicted of three of the nine murders and she was sentenced to life in prison um, where she ultimately passed away from natural causes. Um, up until her death, she maintained her innocence, claimed that all the victims were dying of natural causes and that she had nothing to do with it. All right guys, so there is a lot more information than what I have told you on this video. I basically just, I basically just gave you kind of the main, main points and of course talked about some of the victims. I mean, this video would be like an hour, hour to two hours long if I wanted to delve into each little, you know, piece of information. So anyway, hopefully I was able to give you enough info that you got, you know, something out of this video. Again, I'm in downtown Sacramento. It's a little sketchy around here, so 
I don't want to leave my car parked too long, so I'm going to head out of here, guys. Again, if you're new around here, my name is Harmon. Please subscribe if you're new. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.